Well, happy end of Gregorian calendar, uh, last day, and we get to be with you on the last day. What a blessing and a privilege. We're going into uh, a new Parsha. I mean, we just started um, the book of Exodus, Shemot. We've just started that book, but um, we we're in Vieira, Exodus 6 to 935. Just quick house cleaning. Hello, hello to replayers, right, Brenda? Hey. Oh, we love you. All of you we who love are watching you all on the watching, replay. Listening. Thank you. Those of you who are listening on the podcast, we just want to tell you that our hearts are with you, even though this might be a time, you know, a little bit different of a time frame. Our hearts are with you, and we know that whatever the Holy One is going to be speaking today, it's for you at whatever time you're watching this, because that's just how good he is. So we just want to make sure that you feel loved and welcomed and embraced. You're part of all of this, all of you, the ones that are able to be here live and the ones that are able to watch the replays or listen on podcast. We appreciate you. We love you. Yay. We love, love, love you all. All of you ladies all over the world. We have ladies coming in today. I can just off the, off the glance right here. I'm seeing ladies from Canada hopping in. We always have ladies hopping in from South Africa. If you're coming in from the, if you're watching on Facebook, even on the replay or listening, would you just comment or would you just tell us where you're listening from? That does our heart good that we, and we want you to know that we see you and we want to be able to shout out to you and say how much we love you. and We appreciate you. Right. And many of you have seen, we have uh, exciting things. This is an exciting month. We have the creation gospel uh, conference coming up. And for those of you who are already in a creation gospel course, you already know, like, like, right. Like phenomenal, amazing, fun teachings from uh, Dr. Halisa Alwine um, and So this conference is going to be great for those of you who are like, maybe you're in a course or you've already done a course and you're um, maybe even have friends and you you're trying to explain to them what it is. You're like, "Ah, I don't even, I can't explain it. I don't know how to get it. This is going to be a great foundation. This is going to be a great foundation week because obviously this is like a three month class. They're we're put doing it in four nights and then one night of question and answers. It's, it's going to be more foundational to get you excited, to give you a foundation. So you can step into a cl- the next class coming up, which will have that av- information at the end available for you. You can step in there with Keisha and Keisha Gallagher will be team teaching with Holisa and it'll be great because you can step in and you already have a foundation. Brenda, did you, do you remember just your thoughts when you first stepped into the creation gospel? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I didn't know anything. I'm like, I don't even know. I thought I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know nothing. Pretty I'm much pulling up my. I'm yeah, yeah. yeah but I it was nothing. good, and and it really it really starts it did, for me personally. Just the way that I think, it took me a little bit of time before I was able to actually um, process the information. You know well, uh, yeah. so a lot of it was just like receiving information and. I was kind to myself and I would recommend that to everyone whenever we're learning something new or whenever we're, we're, we're studying when we're really studying, don't, don't worry about it. I mean, study, of course, press in, of course, prepare, of course, but if it's not registering, relax because it's by the spirit that we learn guys. It's not by the words and our intellect. If that's where we're going, it's a mess. It's not about increasing our intellect. It's about knowing him in it, in our spirits, having communion with him and having intimacy with him. And that's the purpose of the creation gospel. And it may, it may seem that because it's so much information, it may seem that it's just about learning information. And there is that process too, of course, but it's really about having intimacy with the Holy One. So I just want to um, give you all, you know, anyone who might feel like it's a little over their head, don't worry about it. It's all, it's all good. It's over It'll, all of our heads. It's okay. It's over. Oh, seriously. Hello. I'm missing you. Where'd you go? Oh, right here. I had to go grab my, <laughs> I, I'm working off of a hot spot. So I re- realized okay. my phone's going dead and we do not want that to happen. No, I'm going to read. Um, Robin is, helps us with some of our sales and marketing. And I just, she came up with this and she loves the creation gospel, Robin Bales. Oh, and I yeah. want to, you guys know her from her and a Jen on Thursday nights. She wrote this out yesterday and I, I'm, you'll be seeing it in some of our, like the uh, pages and things that we do for this, co- this conference. But she said, with everything going on in the world today, have you wondered what this all means? Your soul's crying out for understanding that seems just beyond your reach and your heart desires wisdom, but the chaos is causing hopelessness. People seem unhinged and you think surely this will end. 
You know, the answers are hidden in the pages of the word of God. And that's possibly sad, dusty on your shelf, not because you don't love it, but where do you even begin? Something in you believes that there has to be more. If only you could just find it, take heart. You're right. Come with us to explore the creation gospel message hidden in plain sight from the beginning of the seven days of creation to the seven spirits of God, the seven holy feasts and the seven assemblies of revelation. These thematic keys will unlock the word and make way more of this Holy Spirit to permeate it into your life. So if you're looking to grow in your walk with the Lord and unlock the word and all the layers in depth, then this is a really great study for you. I, I thought that was just really good because wow. it, it made me feel mm -hmm. like, yes, yes. Cause a lot of people don't understand. She's just not going through the seven days of creation, but as you unlock and you teach these things like chiasms, maybe you've never heard that word before. And you'll hear us throw that out every once in a while. Maybe you're new. I love Brenda. You said, just let it wash over you. Just sit through it. So you can come with us. We want you to come and sit live. We have an opportunity. If you're in the cafe membership, all the videos are free to you. They're all going to be in there. They'll be posted by the next day. Um, if you're not, and you're, I'm not interested in a membership. We do have that video package available that you can get. I recommend just sit back and enjoy it. And then go back and rewatch it and take your notes, right? So sit back right. and let it wash over you. Yes. I would say audit, you know, going through college, I audit the class and be like, yes. yeah, this is cool. And then come back and then rewatch it. And then now I'm going to, now I'm going to jump in. And a lot of you've heard me say that, like even Dr. Dye's course, I'm like, just audit, sit back and listen, right. let it wash over you. Yeah. So thanks, Brenda. Give yourself some grace, grace. Give yourself some grace, grace. Yeah. And yeah. You're yeah. Not, you're, if you're curious, go, jump in on our, you know, you can go to our website, the It's a with a K, K A F E check that seven day free trial out, go in there, check a few things out. And you can kind of see, because not only just for this conference, but if you're like, this is the year I need to just set level up. I want to make an investment in my growth in the word. I want to understand things. Like I hear Brenda and, and, and Charlie and Jen and, and, uh, and Robin, and I'll hear people like, you know, Kim Allen jump in and say things, or I'll hear other yeah. people jump in and say things. And I'm like, I just want to know how do they know those things? We'd love to help show you. And it's not, it's, it's not too hard, right, Brenda? Mm -mm. Nope, it's not too hard. No, and you know, it's just, it's just lovely. We just have a great community. We love all of our communities. So, I think that's the best part is the community. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we have we have exceptional, amazing instructors from yeah. you know, world. I I mean, people and all the names they're in there. Yeah, we we don't even need a name drop. They're just we have all the good people. And so we have great, great people teaching. So this story, Brenda, do you just, we both kept saying, <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little, I need another week. I'm a little undone. I need another week. <laughs> I need another week to get ready for today. You guys, I, I'm so here we go. We'll see how we go. We'll see <laughs> how far we'll we get, <laughs> how far we get. And then we may open it up for you guys to jump in on this one, because literally we both, it's interesting. We both got stuck on the same thing. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. We did. did. And we haven't had a chance to talk because I have had, um, company, so mm -hmm. I haven't even been available. So you and I have not had a chance to talk since, you know, like last week. No, so um, no. this morning when we got on, we were, uh, she, Charlie's talking. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at my notes. <laughs> That's exactly what I have here. The same words, everything. Um, it's beautiful. I, I am delighted. Can I just tell you that it feels to me like this is, this is the day that the Holy One is saying, mm, you you think you may think that I don't recognize you. You may think that you are just one of the millions, but he's saying today, I see you. I'm for you. Wait until you see what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you in a way that you will never, you and your generations will never be able to say that you are not greatly loved. Mm. This is, this is happening. I mean, this is, it's a lot going on and I'm just thinking about his heart yes. and how in his heart, he is like, I know this is going to be hard guys. What a good dad, right? I know this is going to be hard, but you are going to appreciate it later. So you let's so go. Are, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here shaking my head because yeah. you don't know my notes and we didn't even talk no. about this. Uh -uh. So the first thing I have all in red before we jump into six is I want to do a, ba a backup, just a quick, quick review. And basically I want to say exactly what Brenda just said. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so 
<laughs> the <laughs> reason that this book is not called the great story the building the of a nation um it's not <laughs> why is it not called the passover pesach why is right. it not why is it called shemot the names is it yeah. what are all the reasons and i sent an email out for you and y'all should be listen open in those emails because you yeah. don't have to agree oh, with me but i hope i stir some stuff up inside of you or or maybe yeah. you're like oh that was cute that would make me laugh but you know i've been trying to write a couple at least a week out to you guys so open your emails look for it. it's charlie at the Ruta cafe add me to your contact so it doesn't end up in spam but by the way I, I they are really good this. Charlie. by the way oh thank you, you. you know that i'm I, having fun i'm just I sharing what them. i'm learning I'm, I'm stealing bread i'm like stealing the bread from other people and then reserving it putting butter share on the it bread pass like the basket mine. just pass the basket sis that's all you need I'm to do just, <laughs> I'm just saying, I think, I think I read this in like Israel Bible Institute or something. And we're talking about this is that, he, you know, here's this great, this thing is happening. And it wasn't just even about his name. He's saying, I'm going to, he's given this name before. And I, I'm, I'm going to talk, we'll talk about that in a minute, but he's, he's given the yod heh vav -Hey, He's given that name before. This isn't the first time they've ever heard that name. And I'll give you the scripture verses to go back because all the patriarchs have heard this name before. It's not new, but they're going to learn it in a different way. So that's one thing. But the other thing is this, there was a covenant made with Avraham, right? There's this covenant made with him saying that you're going to be as numerous as the stars. You're going to be so uncountable. And what I think is beautiful about this being called the book of names is because I think he's saying that I know your name because Pharaoh may say you're so numerous. We can't name you or count you, but I can, because I know the hairs on your head. I can name you. I know your name and I hear your cries. You're not yeah. too numerous for me because I know who you are. And I believe, and there's other midrashes. There's, I know there's a couple other rabbis that believe this, that those three signs, when he took those elders away from last week, he goes to the elders and he's like, well, what if they don't believe me? What if they can't, you know, what if they're not going to listen? And he says that I want you to throw your rod down, make it a snake. Then I want you to put your hand in to make it a leopard. Then I want you to turn to get some of the water and I want you to turn it to blood. Now, a lot of us have been mesmerized by this. And it's kind of like that lullaby thing where, and I was yeah. listening, I think the rabbi Foreman last night, I was cracking up. Cause it's like, have you guys like really listened to some of the lullabies you saw saying to your children? Horrible. Like, rock a bye baby oh. on the treetop. <laughs> When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And countdown will come, baby, cradle and all. And we sing that to our children to put them to sleep. And it's this lullaby effect that, and you're like, about the, it's about the spider coming up on the tuck, whatever that, all these, look at those, the, the things that we've said over and over. What do they call the little stories our children about the little girl on the, sat on nursery a tuck rhymes. Her way all the nursery rhymes mm -hmm. they're horrible the baby dot the baby falls out of a tree and like who says that to their kids right but we've said it so much that we're just we're just lulled by it. like oh we'll just mm -hmm. say it mm -hmm. and it, a lot of the same thing happens think about some of the worship songs i want to challenge you there don't oh, be lulled you went there the <laughs> words you might know <laughs> listen to some of the words you might be singing Listen to some of the things you might be saying, even, I mean, if there's radio songs, and you're like, well, this isn't harmful. Think about the words you're speaking into existence. So with that being said, there, I think that we, we forget that. Let's ask the questions. Why did he do these three signs? What were these three? There had to be a significance to these. And I looked up a couple of midrashes. I'm just going to, this is, I'm not going to stay on this brand, but the three signs, one of the, one of the, the number one thing that's, this is him. This is the Holy one telling the people i see you and i hear you and the elders would have known it why because the rod turned to snake because they had been reduced to creepy crawly things that they were so numerous that they were like crawly things that they had been told and that i'm sure that had been spoken over to them but what snakes they were what crawly things they were i mean i sent out an email today how to get away with murder i mean that's the that's the that's how that's how you do it that's how pharaoh did it that's how hitler did it is you reduce a population to a creepy crawly thing to a rat to a mm -hmm. snake to crawling crawling things so he's telling them that I'm in control of that. You know, he's telling him the hand, the leper that I saw the babies. I saw death. I'm yes. the one who has power over the death. I've seen the death that's happened and I can reverse that and I can vindicate that. And then we see the water to blood. We see him taking that water from the Nile. I know those babies that you think that just got thrown in there. And no one knew about them. I know the blood. I'm going to yeah. redeem the blood. I'm going to redeem those babies that were thrown in there. I know their names. Yes. And I believe, I believe 
And I want you, I'd love for you to go in there and check. What do you think those three things meant? But that's what I believe. I believe that he used those terms, that they, this is to describe all the things that they would have said, I've known what's happening to you. This, these weren't magic tricks, ladies. He wasn't saying, here's some magic tricks you can get and um, send away for $99.99 and you too can have this box of tricks. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what these were. There had to be, these had to be for something. So what do you think? What have you read? Yeah. What have you been taught? I want to know, I want you to, share those with us in comments, email me. I want to know, because what I feel like is it was a way of him saying to these elders, I've heard your cries. You're not too numerous. I know your names and I'm redeeming you and I'm going to vindicate you. And when they saw that all happening, they were like, okay, I hear you. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's do this. And we noticed too, that the, that the magicians only could replicate, not everything, but they could replicate, but they are not they're not, they're all they're doing is increasing the hardship on their people. You realize that like when they, it, when they, when they duplicated the blood, it was That's increasing good. the hardship when they duplicated the, the, um, uh, oh, now I'm like going over, where's my Pesach notes <laughs> when, when they were duplicating the different, um, uh, blah, all blah, the blah, signs you know I'm talking about all the, yeah, signs, all the signs every sign yeah except what the gnats they couldn't that that they couldn't do but when they were duplicating all they did was increase the hardship that really got me this week it's like you know if 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 you were really if pharaoh was really as powerful as he said he was if those people were really as powerful as they said they were wouldn't they do something to wouldn't they stop what was happening yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That, well, that's that's, well, that's what really I, cool that you said that because that's one of the things they talk about, even in the name, and we'll jump there, is in this okay. name, uh-huh. one of the things that is it, midrashic and rabbis are saying is in the understanding of who this God was, their understanding that he is the God that knows when to say it is enough. Yes. he's the, and, I, and I immediately was thought, he's the God who stops the ocean and says it's enough. You can stop right here. He was the God who could stop it and reverse it. They couldn't do, they couldn't stop it. They could just replicate it. Yeah. That's very good, Charlie. That's really, he was the God. This was the God he was, he was telling them and he's telling Pharaoh, I'm the God who knows when it's enough. He's Mm -hmm. the God who, when I was in creating, I knew to stop the duplication. So we don't have 45 arms. I know when it's enough. (laughs) I'm the one who's control. I don't just start this thing and we just continue on evolving and, and then he knows when it's enough. Like we don't have more eyes or more ears. We, right. We don't have any of those things, right? We haven't continued on evolving for that purpose, you know, but what he knows when it is enough, enough is enough. And this is where we're stopping. Yes, exactly. I see Mary Catherine says he is the ultimate boundary setter. Yes. I yes. saw that. That was, that's a really awesome. good. That's so really we have good. this name and it's, you know, we have see that it, we see the letters Yod, Hey, Bob, Hey, and he says, this is who I am. And we're going to hear, I am that I am, I am who I am. I am. I'm the, so we hear, he, this is again, this is a multidimensional name and I'm going to mm-hmm. warn you and I may offend you. So please love me. If you hear, or you think, you know, exactly how to say this name, I caution you. I caution you because I think we probably, none of us know how to say it right. It's the name we shouldn't speak of, right? It's the name we shouldn't say, maybe, you know, it's just say, here's the letters, but I don't really know how to say it because I don't even know the dimensionality of all this, but this is all I know. So I would just caution you that if you're going to ground your faith into exactly how a name is said, step back from that for a minute and then, and just present that to the Holy one. And then if he says, yep, that's what I want you to do. You'd be like, okay, moving forward. But if I just want you to just be careful that you're not grinding your doctrine again, a doctrine into how something is pronounced or what something is, because I feel like then we step into a Pharisee or a Sadducee role that we have to be really careful that we don't want that. We want our heart to be aligned with, is that how you want me to say it? And if he says, yes, then be like, that's how I'm saying it. Cause he'll let you know. Right. Right. Bren. I agree. I totally agree. Yeah, <sighs> I said it. I went there. Let's go a lot of places did. today. I, I know. I love it. And I, and, and can we just say that, um, that we love you guys. (laughs) And if you, if, if you're, if you, uh, have that conviction, stand with your conviction. If you, if you have a different conviction, stand with your conviction, be strong, be, Oh, wait, wait a minute. Be strong, be strengthened. Oh, wait, that's the portion this week. 
in, in who he is creating you to be. And at the same time, ladies, love, yes. love, love, oh, love, thank you. love, because in your strength, you don't want to be running over people and killing them with your knowledge yes, or your, yes. or, or your insights that maybe somebody else hasn't come up to yet. Yes. So Yes. That's, well, that's kind well, of I what love we're that. And, and we see Kim over here. Kim, I'm 100% in agreement with you. And I'm in alignment with sages. They all say, they don't say the name. That's why you're going to hear, you're going to hear us say Hashem, Adonai, the Holy One, the Creator, the Eternal yeah. One. You'll see in your King James Version, most versions, it's capital, all capitals, L- Lord, mm-hmm. L-O-R-D. Mm-hmm. So for those of you who are beginners, just know that in your Bible, when you see those capital letters, know that it is actually replacing those, those four letters, yeah. those Hebrew letters. And, right. you know, I said earlier, this isn't brand new. And, and he's saying, I'm going to introduce, uh, you're going to know the name that no one knows. Well, and we're like, this should be a question. You shouldn't have been lulled by this. Have you asked the question? Wait a minute. Nobody else knows this name. Not true. Genesis 14, 22, Abraham says, I lifted up my hands to yod heh vav Isaac in Genesis 27, 7 says, and I will bless you before yod heh vav heh Jacob in Genesis 27, 20, when he's saying, how'd you get all this so fast? He tells his dad, yod heh vav heh made it happen quickly for me. So they know this guy. They know this name. This isn't a new, new name. So what is he saying? This isn't new. Mm-hmm. But we're thinking of that. You know, we see back to Genesis 17, 1, it says, and yod heh vav heh appeared to Avram and said, I am El Shaddai walk before me and be perfect. Now I'm going to tell you, I've never questioned this before. I've lulled through this. It's been my, my Sunday school felt board that I just said, yep, that's how it is. And I just bobble headed through it. And this year I stopped and I did some research and I went into, um, who did I get this from? Cause I want to give everyone credit. I know it was Rabbi Foreman and Aleph Beta. I'm pretty sure this is through Aleph Beta. And I watched this video, one of their cute little cartoons, and I just adored this. And I, I screenshot it and I thought I probably shouldn't share this because I feel like I pay for a subscription. So I'm right. pretty sure I'm pro- it's yeah. proprietary. So, proprietary. I probably should do that. so I'm going to tell you the term. It's interesting when he says, I want you to walk before me through like El Shaddai. They knew a God who, and I'm like, we're supposed to, he teaches, how do you walk before him? I want you to see the picture of a shepherd with a sheep. The sheep walk before a shepherd and the shepherd just kind of guides them. And then the last sheep will, will kind of through his peripheral vision, see where the shepherd is. And then he bumps the next one and then they bump the next one and then they guide them. And that's how a shepherd doesn't go in front of the sheep. A shepherd stays in the back. So they know him. They've seen him as my shepherd. They've seen that he was the God who's been my shepherd before. By God, that's how we seen it. I wrote my little cute notes. Let me see if I can read this better. But he had not appeared to them in that same way. He was going to appear to them now as a new way of this shepherd. He was actually going to appear to them in this, a whole new dimension from this yod heh vav that he had not shown them. That he now is going to say, I'm going to walk with you and before you. And that would have been a whole new thing because before they were being pushed like sheep. And now he's saying, I'm going to come in and I'm, because guess what? Isn't he going to dwell? He's going to make a tabernacle and dwell amongst them. This is all new. They're going to know him in a whole new way. You're going to, you're going to yada him. Bren, Mm -hmm. do you want to talk? Do you have input on that a little bit about the word yada? It's the, it's the, um, yada is to know, but it's not an intellectual knowledge. It's an intimate knowledge. It is, it is an experiential, it's hands, it's, it's touching, it's feeling, it's experiencing with your senses. It's knowing, um, from experience, not from just, um, being told something, no, it's not from something far away. It's we use it in a marriage terminology. It is between a marriage. It's the word that's used for when a husband and wife know each other and then they have a baby. Yeah. (laughs) And we have kids here. So that, that is it. It's the knowledge. That's the word. Yada. Yada. And that's the word. And it's, And it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's um, entering into a revelation by hands, by the hands. That's if you take the letters apart, you're going to kind of see that it's the hands that are taking you into the doorway, into revelation. It's the hands that are moving you through. In other words, it's experience. It's the experiential loving and knowing. Yeah. So it's not a far away. It's not a far away God. It's not a God that we think of far away. That's not present here with us right now. 
he is echad. We, you know, all of these are layers and we don't really understand them. They don't even, they don't even um, keep, they don't even allow us to like see the depth of it. But all of this is deep, deep, deep layers upon layers upon layers upon layers. And that's what this is. This, this intimate knowledge is, um, is that experiencing it and, and absorbing it into you. And it changes you. It, it changes, changes everything you. about you. Th Charlie, I'm telling you this Torah portion, <laughs> this Torah portion is about, you know, a uh, radical, radical change. It, it, it's such a radical Torah portion or not Blow, blowing or what mind. happens when we don't the consequence and the limitations uh, if you don't say yes i'll make the change yeah then you are then you are 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 left to be you know one of the drones oh oops i got it there we go okay um yeah it's just yep yeah, it's just, it's, this is what he wants for us, guys. He wants intimacy. And um, it's just like with your kids, you want to know them. You don't want to just know about them. You don't want to just know that they have brown hair or brown eyes or black hair or blonde hair. You don't want to just know about them. You want to know them. What do they think? What do they feel? How do they respond? And this whole thing, and Charlie, you're going to get into this. I, I'm excited to hear what you have to say about this too. But this whole thing with with hardening Pharaoh's heart, which is really a crux of what's going on here in this Torah portion, it is about the experiential. It's an experiential thing. It is not um, an, a, an intellectual knowledge. It is experiential. It's like this is this this hands on strengthening of your will. And what I love about that is that God didn't force him to behave like what we're thinking of, you know, no, no not a forced no. thing. He's not forcing him to do anything. He is bringing us about, and that's what Yada is. Yada is bringing about this, this ability for us to have intimate connection, truth, actual information, not, not information, actual um, communication, you know, and that's really like the overview of this Parsha. So I'm sure that you all got that when you were reading this. <laughs> it's like, well, and I hope that I would, my heart is that you have the words of Yeshua just jumping ringing, all over the ringing, place. ringing, ringing. I hope, because I hope you, re I hope you know by now, and if you're new, I'm going to say it just, it's worth repeating. At least 90% of everything Yeshua said yeah, is yeah, yeah, quote, yeah, yeah, a yeah, direct yeah. quote from, yeah. from your, I'll just say the Talmud. It's, it's through the, the Torah, it's through the Torah, it's through the a Psalm, it's Isaiah. I mean, he's quoting, yeah. Yeah. He, it, there, there's nothing, he's not sending a whole bunch of, he, everything he's redirecting us. So I'm praying that things just pop up off the page and when we can. Yeah. We'll try to bring, you know, bring some little, because that's fun for me. I love saying, oh, the hyperlink. Hyperlink. Um, we see in 6.9, um, it's, he says, Brenda, that they couldn't hear because of their broken spirit and the cross <sighs> bonded. And I looked that up and I looked up, like, what was the anguish? And that word, that word for anguish is the Hebrew word, katser. Um, and it's Hebrew 7114, so H7114 for our studiers who want to go back and look this up. But um, it was interesting to see the, the English trends, the English strongs, or if you go in and look at the Brown's dictionary, it was to be mm -hmm. shortened, which was interesting to me. I filed this right here. I didn't put depth into it, but it was just interesting. But it means to be cut off like wheat being harvested, like it's just cut, cut, it's cut down. So that is kind of beat to be made short, right? So, um, I mean, thinking of things of like counting the Omer when we're watching things grow, but it's cut short. But what popped in my head is here their spirits were cut off. Their spirits were, their spirits were cut sere. They were made short. And I was thinking about that mentality that they couldn't hear because their spirits were cut sere. Brenda, mm. we see the spies couldn't see because they were cut sere. They exactly. saw themselves as cut sere. We'll see the yeah. spies saying, 
we're like grasshoppers. We're little. We're little. They're big. We're little. Who told you that? Who told you that? <laughs> Who told you you were cut, Sarah? Yeah, your that. spirits were cut off. And then, and then it says because of the bondage, which was Abad H5647, and uh, you know, that serve labor reduced to servitude. You know, we're again, we're going to keep hearing this. We're going to see their perception as bondage in the, even in the desert that we, you know, like we've said last week, it was, you know, getting them out of Egypt was not a big deal. Getting Egypt out of them. Now that's going to be, well, a that's a whole different process. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then it's going to be like, yeah, well, we couldn't get Egypt out of you. So your kids can come in. Right. But getting Egypt out of them may take another, take two generations. And I've been working on really praying and we won't get that. But that's one of the things of our growth and in my family, even with my daughter, we've been really working on generational things that we really want to put an ax to the root. We want to, we want to put an ax to the root. We want to cut the things are off that shouldn't go to the next generation. And we want to feed and grow the things that we want to go to the next generation. And so um, we're going to see that this happening. This is a process that's happening. It's not that he was being mean to them, but he's saying, you know, we need to get this out of this generation because they perception of themselves were they were. They couldn't even hear. They couldn't hear because of that. Mm -hmm. They couldn't hear. Right. So they couldn't say Hineni. They couldn't even <sighs> say that because they couldn't so hear. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. We hear and went, and then they saw themselves. So they saw themselves as servants. They had taken on the identity is what I wrote is they had taken this identity on as a, as servants, you know, just because of what you do doesn't mean that's who you are. It's just what you do. This right. is what I do, but it's not who I am. It's what I do. And they saw them as that. And that's why I believe that that should be a hyperlink that we hear Yeshua saying that, listen, you're not hearing. I want you to hear me speak because my yoke is not a bad. It's yes. light. Yes. It doesn't cut you off. It doesn't make you small. I want you to see yourselves as not being in bondage. And I feel like they instantly would have been taken back to this Parsha and said, oh, because if I don't see it that way, I can't hear. I can't Shema. Yeah. yeah. And that's what Yeshua says, like in John, uh, or is it John 14? He's like, don't, he's telling us, he's telling his, uh, his um, followers, don't be, don't let your heart be troubled what he's referencing is the fact that he just told them that he was leaving and he was going to be gone. Why can't I follow you? Why can't I come with you? I don't want to leave you. I don't want to be left behind. And he's saying, listen, don't, don't worry. Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust me. You, tr you trust in God. This is how do they trust in God? Because of this, this, this always is referencing us back to this. Yes. And, um, Charlie, um, uh, Sombra mentioned that yeah, I saw that as correction. Okay. Yeah. We want to make yeah. that correction is I said, Talmud, I should have said to knock it's I yeah. meant, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying you were taking back to the entire package he's yes. going back, or we'll yes. say old Testament. He's re right. he's quoting old Testament. That, that's what he's doing. Tanakh, so yeah. So yes. To knock. Yeah. It was yeah, just, we'll so, that I mean, I, I, I heard you, what you were saying, not what you said. But somebody else may not. So thank you. But we're so going to see that. lots That's of people good. not hearing. This is the hearing. This is all about what we're hearing. And we're going to jump into yeah. the next thing is this Pharaoh's heart. The reason Pharaoh's why did heart. Pharaoh, why couldn't yes. he hear? What, and I love what you said about the, um, um, I love what you said about the broken, the broken spirit. So why are you not hearing the broken spirit, Charlie? You said, um, is it from a broken spirit? Is that why? Is it yeah. from, is it from the fact that you are engaged with all of these, um, gods of the world? Yeah. And they are taking up all of your time and energy. And if you think that that's not happening today, come on guys, think pay again. attention. They, they are should, alive and living right may now. This, may that's it be revealed to you this Shabbat, yes. because I mean, yes. that is the reason we see Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh's heart is hearted. And Brenda, we're going to go through the two different words for hardened, but the yeah. reason Pharaoh's heart needed to be hardened, we'll use an right. English term, was mm -hmm. because God wasn't after, he was, he was after, we see the Holy One is not, not only is he wooing a nation to say, yeah. I'm the one you want to follow. I'm, you know, we see peacocking where the peacocks have the big feathers, or he was saying, look at me, I can do, I can no hands on my bike. You know, the kids try to get the girlfriend, <laughs> like when they're little, look at me, I don't have no hands. Look, look, or look what I can do on my skateboard. I can do the jump. Look at me, like look he, at me. I mean, <laughs> 
please, I'm not reducing our father to that, but I'm just saying he's trying to woo a bride. Yeah, that's happening. This is dimensional. He's loving. Not only that, but he's trying to say, Pharaoh, I don't want you to just give up and just say, whatever, go. He's trying to woo. He's trying to get Pharaoh to change the vision. His vision isn't look at all these gods. His vision isn't, well, this God takes care of this and my horses. I got my horses. I got my chariots. I've got this, this. He wasn't, he was after him trying to release that vision and change the vision that there is one God And I don't need to trust in my horses and chariots. I don't need to trust in the God of the Nile, the God of the sun, the God of fire, the God of ice, the God who brings the crops. I don't need to appease all these gods. I just want to submit to the one true God, because if I can submit to him and I submit to that happens every, all the chaos, I don't have to juggle all these things, right? But the chaos, he's the God who knows when it's enough. He's the one who brings, brings order to the chaos. That's what he was trying to change his vision. Charlie, That's this is like happening. a, this is like a, this is like a salvation message. I mean, so big. This is like, and, and look at what he did to get Pharaoh's attention and the people of Egypt. You realize he wasn't going to just transport his chosen few out and, and take, he could have, if he wanted to. Just take them out. Draw, t- just take them back to the land where here's they. The magic where carpet. They here's, let's here go. Goes, let's go. It's all Each good. Each family gets a carpet. Let's just no. go. He was. He wanted to show himself mighty, so that the Egyptians and Pharaoh specifically would see who he was and want to come. How beautiful and they did. A lot of them. So, did. sister, when you're saying that, <laughs> instantly that popped in my heart. All, all you just heard and you, like you said, if the Egyptians and the Hebrews and you, there's a reason that we practice this every year during Pesach, because he's saying this wasn't just the Egyptians. This wasn't just for Pharaoh. This is for you. So look in the camera, everybody. This, this is, is for, for you. you. He knows your name. He knows that you've been crying out. He knows that sometimes you can't even cry out. You can't even hear him because your bondage is too heavy. You've been too through heavy. too much. Mm-hmm. You've been too wounded. You see yourself as small. You don't see yourself as able to do it anymore. You're weak in your mind and your body and you're tired. He sees you and he knows your name. It hasn't gotten too big. The universe isn't too big for him. There's not too many people on the planet for him. He knows you. You. And this story is for you. you. That's right. That's right. This is about your deliverance. It, it, is, about, it, it is about the deliverance the big picture, remember layers, always layers, 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 layers. But today he is specifically what Charlie just said. He is specifically saying, I want to talk to you. Yes. I want, I want, I want you to see what I do with those things that raise themselves up and try to take my place. You think those things are, you think that you think that, that the government is going to be able to take my place? Do you think that your, your paycheck is going to take my place? Nope. He's the provider. He, so what he's saying is all of those things that you hold on to that take care of you, he's saying, I'm going to take care of you. And will, will he use different things? Yes, he will. Of course, yeah. he'll use different yeah, yeah. things to take care of you. That's, that's the way he does things. Yeah. But he's yeah. saying, I am the one. Yes. Look at me, look at me, yes. follow me and I will deliver you and I will bring healing to you. And I will, I will set you free. This and is what are the gods he's breaking always. down? This should be breaking gods down in your life. I'm going to pray right now, father. Yes. I pray right now that Abba. each one of these signs that we see that they ignite something at us that reveal in us a God that we're serving, that is exalting itself above your name. Mm-hmm. Father, that we, each one of us have had different things we're bowing our knees to, whether it's we're bowing our knee to a provision, we're bowing mm-hmm. our knee to illness, we're bowing yeah. our knee to something, an identity, a perception. Mm-hmm. Father, I ask right now that you reveal to each person listening, 
you yes, let us know, Father, what is it? And as women, we rise up as a get there connect those that we cut those things out of our house. We yes. rise up like Moshe's wife and we cut, cut the foreskin off. We rededicate yes. our homes. We remind our families of who we are. We remind our families of who we serve, that we do not bow our knees to other gods. But instead, Father, we stay in the land of Goshen. We, we put the blood around our doors yes. and we say, me and my house will yes. be saved. And Father, you're going to reveal the things keeping us from that. And we just thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you. I love Kim. Amen. Kim wrote up here. She says that that uh, it is, you know, we're taught that everyone's name is in the book. And I think that's, here we are. This is again, when that's saying your book is, your name is written down. We're, this is the book of names. He knows us. You are not insignificant. So stop believing that lie and stop believing it. It is a life straight from the pit of hell. You yes. are not insignificant. Is there a hell? I don't know. But sh- <laughs> whatever, that place, the bad place, that's a lie from there. Yeah. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. There's that's a lie straight from there. <laughs> the evil part, the evil place, the evil part of it. Yeah. So Pharaoh's that's heart, really let's good. talk about those words. Let's yeah. talk about the words we have. Yeah. It's we have two words, right? Brenda, yeah. we have the two mm-hmm. words. What are the two words? We have Hazak and Kasa. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about Hazak mm-hmm. for us? What does that yeah. word mean? Um, you, you guys will remember this, that every time a book is finished, it says, hazak, hazak. It, t- it tells you be strengthened, be strengthened, and may you be strengthened. It's talking about being strengthened. Hazak yeah. is a word. Uh, it's translated the same way that the other word is. There's two words in Hebrew that are being used for the word uh, harden or uh, harden or hardened. And, and the one that is used eight times in this Parsha, eight times, guys, which is new beginnings, which is, it's a, it's a cycle that's been completed, and now it's taking you up to the next level. That's what eight is, right? It's taking you up. Eight times this word is used, um, and uh, it's strengthened. So what it's saying is, what you have right now, I am going to strengthen what you have. That's why we, we say it after we read the books. Every time we finish a, 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 Torah, a book of Torah, we say, be strengthened. Why? Because we want to take what we have just gotten and we want that to strengthen us. That's what the Holy One was doing with Pharaoh. He was strengthening what was already there. He did not want him to be weak willed like Charlie uh, referenced this earlier. He didn't want him to get scared of the majesty of God and just give God what he wanted to be done with it. He wanted the change to occur. Yes. So he yes. strengthened him so that he could endure. And the first time that it's used, it's really neat. Let me see if I wrote it down. Um, the first time that it was used, um, I just remember this. So you guys can check up on me and tell me if I'm wrong. Put it in the notes. <laughs> first time it was used was in Genesis when um, during b- the birthing process. And um, gosh, I'm thinking that it was. No, I, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, rewind that. That's the other word is used during the birthing process. This word, the first time it's used is when Lot and his wife are leaving Sodom and they are so terrified, they're frozen. And the messengers that are sent grab their hands and strengthen them and uphold them and take them out. That's what this word is talking about. That's strengthened. Isn't that That's cool? a really great, it's always, really cool. Because always go to the first usage. It helps you to um, uh, see understand. a bigger picture, mm-hmm. right? And the thing is that he will, he's going to make, you know, this whole thing is he doesn't want, it wasn't about him making him hard or he was going to make no. him stubborn. No. Now that's used a couple of times er- earlier. We see that mm-hmm. used two other times. That word mm-hmm. is used about stubbornness. That word is ka- mm-hmm. kasha. Um, that's word used twice. Mm-hmm. That's very negative, but we see this hazak. He's actually... When you're when we, we we want us like you were saying at the end. I love when we say hazak hazak. When we're saying at the yeah. end of a book, mm-hmm. because we want to be encouraged. That's what encourages us. Why? Yeah. Because if we're encouraged, yeah. our vision changes. Yeah. Yep. If we're encouraged by his words, if we're encouraged to move on, mm-hmm. we're not encouraged to say stat. We're not a, not getting tired or beaten down. Mm-hmm. And if we're encouraged, we'll listen and we can hear. Mm-hmm. If he was strengthened. He wanted him to not just be like, all right, whatever, just leave, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys get that? He was saying, God was saying, I'm going to strengthen his, I'm going to strengthen his, strengthen him. I want him to, to hold him up. I don't want, so that he will, then his vision will change and we'll see it happen in seven. We see his vision start to change in the seventh plague. 
Yeah, we sure did. I, wa I want to see it. I want to share just, I snuck over to Facebook and saw uh, we have our, our resident ancient Near East expert, Gail uh, Heaton, Gail. and she was encouraging everyone, for those of you who are in the cafe, you really want to check out the Parsha points, uh, the challenges on the 10 plagues in the Parsha points, because she does an amazing job going through this, and she's going to give you guys some details, and, and, and you can dig into this, so I want to just share that. It's super, uh, super great place for you to find that, <clears throat> but uh, back over to where my notes are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, back over to the notes. So the, the first time that, that, so it, eight times it's used. So he's talking about the strengthening thing, um, mm -hmm. with Lot and his, and his wife so that they can actually be, be delivered from, which is really interesting to be delivered from that. I just love that being delivered from the, um, the, from the city that was going to be set on fire in a moment. You know what I'm saying? So he was delivering them from, so that was the strength that happened there. And, um, and then um, during um, three times during famine, it was used in Genesis, talking about the famine that was coming uh, in this particular place in, in Egypt. And then, um, and then he, and then he, he continues on, but the other one, are we ready to go to the other one? Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. Kasha. Kasha. Um, the other one is used twice Exodus th seven, three, it is used, it is used in that. And it says, but I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that I may multiply my signs and wonders. I really think in this moment, what was happening was that the Holy one was stopping him right where he was so that he couldn't go any further. He was, he was stuck. He was going to let him be stubborn. He was increasing his stubbornness in that moment so that he could go ahead because he says, so that, so that I may multiply my signs and wonders. There was something that needed to be done. And this was the Holy one addressing the, the something that needed to be done, but it's only used once there. And then once in Exodus 13, 15, and it's, um, it's translated stubborn. Pharaoh's heart, he was stubborn. And it was Pharaoh talking, it was about Pharaoh's heart being stubborn. That all of the other times are him strengthening and saying, hey, I know basically what he's saying to Pharaoh's heart, all the other eight times is, look, I know this is getting really tough. You, you can handle this. We're going to get through this. I'm going to strengthen you. That's what he's doing. Why? Why? There was a purpose for all of this. It wasn't just so that he didn't want him to give up at four. He, he needed no. to go to 10. He needed and to show all the people so they can say, well, you know, he did take care of the God of the Nile. He did get that God and he did get this God. But, you know, if he really, you know, there's still the other ones he didn't acknowledge. No. Yes. Very, very true. So I, ho I hope that helps some. It, it's really important that we don't come into this Torah portion thinking that God forced Pharaoh to, to, um, to do what he was doing, that God took away his ability to have uh, freedom of choice. That's really not at all what's happening. And, and so if that is still like ruminating in your mind, then do a little bit of a word study or, you know, ask the Holy one, ask the spirit of God to just speak life to you over this, because that's not what he's doing. That's not, that's not what's happening here. What's happening here is, is he is taking a nation and he is speaking to an entire nation, the nation of Egypt, this whole nation with all the peoples from all over the world. So that's a clue right there. <laughs> all the peoples from all over the world are there because that's where they've been, you know, that's where they all culminated and he's speaking deliverance to them and he has to do it in such a way that his message can get across so there's things yes. that he has to do and that's what's happening here it's not that he's taking away his choices he's not he didn't like how can you be mad at pharaoh god forced him to do that no that's not what he did he strengthened what was already in his heart he yeah. strengthened what was already there he did the opposite yeah he did he made he him stronger did. so he that made him he stronger did he made him stronger so that he didn't yeah. give up. So he didn't, and he give actually, up. he actually yeah. gave him the opportunity. Yeah. He loved him so much. He gave him yeah, the opportunity did. to change his mind. Yeah, he did to change his vision Yeah, to, of what was important. And, and yeah. then we talked about the seventh and we see that this happening in the seventh, the seventh uh, sign when we have this hail and it wasn't regular hail, right? Brenda, it was like, no fire and ice. Which well, I, I, that which takes I, care of two things. <laughs> Once. Yeah, and I kind of see it's interesting because I kind of see the cloud of fire, and I think that's a, a whole nother day. But I mean, I, yeah. I for some reason I got a little vision of that to look at too. But 
we have this fire God and this ice God and never the two, sh- never the twain shall meet. No, they didn't get along. They, they were didn't opposites. get along in this, <laughs> in this, go- all these little G gods, they, yeah. they were battling each other. So if you watch mm-hmm. Avengers, you have these avenging two gods, <laughs> the fire God, the ice God, they were not uh, wonder twin powers activating. They were not those two. That's not what happened. All of you old enough to know what I'm talking about. Um, that did not that is not what happened. Thank you, Samba, for laughing. So I do not feel old. So uh, this is not what happening. We have these two gods now. He's saying that I can make those two gods ahead. I, I, I'm in control of this. I'm going to put them in one thing and I'm going to make this hail that's fire and ice. Right? That's so amazing. It was powerful. Cool? It was powerful. What else is fire and water? Can I just say, you guys? Go, go, go. Did I, did I, did I, did I steal your thunder? Were you already going to no. say this? No. Fire. What else is fire and water guys? Hashemayim. Mm. Heaven. The word for heaven in Hebrew is fire and water. That that's what makes up the word Hashemayim is fire and water. So it is because that's who, that's who the Holy one is. And so he was saying that over there is not who I am. This is who I am. So he was, man, isn't that so beautiful? Well, yeah. if, think about that. Like, what does that even mean? I mean, we could just, we could, you no, know, if you sat at our tables, this is the <laughs> kind of nerdy <laughs> stuff we do. Is this is like, we're like, what does that even mean? Hashamayim, he's got fire and he's got ice. I mean, we have cleansing, we have revelation. He's yes. trying to bring a purification. purification. He's trying to bring out the waters of cleansing. revelation, mm-hmm. cleansing. Mm-hmm. This is all like, I mean, that hail is a picture yeah. of cleansing. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was, it was annihilating the things that needed to be annihilated, but it left the things that needed to be left because remember at the very end, because you know, you guys all read this, all these nine chapters, right? (laughs) So at the very end, it's like, yeah, but the wheat wasn't destroyed. Mm -hmm. All of the other things that were out, they were destroyed, but he didn't devastate the people and leave them to die. That is not what happened. You know, he's very strategic in the way that he hits things, isn't he, Charlie? Like Job, you can do everything, but you can't kill him. (laughs) Yeah. Don't kill him. So many of you are like, no, Lord, kill me. Like, but he's saying. (laughs) Or kill them. (laughs) Kill them. He's saying, nope, I'm good. I didn't pray that. Um, He's saying, am I, if I'm bringing hail, if I, some, okay, I'm going to do it. Just do it. Whatever it is that you're thinking. Don't don't beat around the bush. Hello. I need to get, we're going to get, there you are. (laughs) Hi. Hello. Listen, listen, sister. If, if you are tired of being judged by your history, stop telling us about it. If you are tired of all these bad things happening to you, could you take a minute? If you find yourself always saying, this is always happening to me. All these bad things are happening to me. This is not me being insensitive because sister, I will sit with you and cry with you unless you just like a year later, you're still sitting and crying about the same. This is the time of year for some of you who are like, okay, let's, let's, let's make some changes. If you didn't do it, Yom Kippur, I'm going to give you a nine months heads up or depending on your calendar, eight months heads up, 10 months, whatever you're at, but I'm going to give you a heads up. I'm giving you some time to be ready for Yom Kippur. Ready? Are you listening? Here's some tips. Stop. Just stop and stop and say, father, why is this all happening to me? I know you didn't kill me. I know you love me. Why are all these things? Why are you trying to get my attention? I got, okay, you got me. I have my attention. I'm not whining. I'm not complaining. I'm not going to do all those things because remember this story is for you. So can we sit and be like, okay, father, because I have to do this, sis. I have to say, okay, I have to stop whining my big whiny butt. And I, well, father, why are you trying to get my attention? What do I need to learn out of this? Because I, I obviously am not hearing you because I feel small. I feel hurt. I feel wounded because let's be honest, that's usually what's happening. I feel wounded. My feelings are hurt. Something's going on. And I need you to strengthen my heart so that I can get through this so that my vision will get changed so that I can enter into the promise that you and the covenants that you have in store for me, because somewhere along the line, I lost the vision and I've trusting, I heard, I heard something and I don't have permission to share who it was. So I'll just say, I was speaking to someone the other day 
and they're dealing with a family member having COVID, they don't have COVID and they're isolating one to the other so that they try not to share. And so she was going around the house, covering everything with like Clorox wipes, spraying everything, trying to do, you know, wearing the mask, doing all the thing and then keeping the other person in the other side of the house. And then, she, and then she told me, I had to stop and ask the Lord to forgive me because I realized I had put so much trust and faith in all these products. And not that you're not supposed to do those, any of that kind of thing. There are some practical things, but it had become almost got almost a thing that she trusted in that more and didn't even spend time praying saying, father, thank you for the hedge of protection that you're putting around me, that I'm not going to get sick, that no weapon formed against me shall pro. I mean, none of those. So what instead what was happening, she was putting her faith and her trust in all these other things. And she's running around trying to make that. I can tell you I've done that. And this is someone that I highly, I highly value. And she was like, I had to stop and repent. And I was realizing all the gods, Brenda, in my life that I have put so much trust in. Can we just, can we just talk about that? Let's not move forward from this Parsha guys today until we recognize that, that he's trying to get a hold of our hearts. Yeah. There are things in our lives that we are still holding on to, and we are still giving place to. Yeah. There's some, there are some, some flies and some cattle and some blood. And there's some things, there's some things that we're still holding on to. We are not allowing him to be king over all. I'm going to say it. There's some yeah. children that we're putting before everything else. Yeah, exactly. Shenanigans. Sh we're, let, <laughs> we're letting the dog, the, the tail wag the dog. And I'm laughing, yeah. looking at my little vision board up here. I'm looking at my vision board that, you know, my little vision board that I have to myself, but I'm thinking we isn't that what he's trying to do? He's saying, I'm trying to set a vision before you. I'm trying to yeah. set life and death before you. What are you going to choose? Come with me, come this way. Choose this, choose life. Yeah. We don't, we're, we won't even get into the next ones. I mean, how fun the next parts are and we get to reenact this over and over, but listen, listen, what is it? What is it? Can, are you, are you brave enough that you'll post this in, in wherever you're watching and listening? Are you brave enough to say, <gasps> He showed me this because maybe if you, you do, you're brave to do that, you let another woman be brave. We get to bear each other's burdens and say, okay, this yoke is not going to be too hard. I'm casting off. I'm casting off my, my God of provision. Cause I was worried at one point that the government was going to go into lockdown and we mm -hmm. have part of our income that is, that is a, a retirement that is government based. And if that locks down, we don't get paid for a few months and oh, what's going to happen. And blah, blah, you know, and it's like, stop. And I sometimes have to do that. Randy laughs at me because yeah. you'll hear me go stop because I have to tell myself, I just like stop this brain crazy wheel I run on yeah. because I was bowing to a provision that it was a horse and a chariot. Yeah. 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 What is it? Because all of those things are from, you know, it is his hand that provides for us. It's his hand that allows all of these things to come into our lives. And if none of those things came into our lives, he's still able to provide for us. Yes. It, he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't, he isn't, he isn't required. Those things aren't required for him, but he allows us to have things like, you know, blessings. He allows those things to come into our lives, but you guys, he, he is able, you know, when we read the word, it needs to, like Charlie was saying earlier, it needs to really change our vision. When we're reading these, I would really encourage you to reread this after we talk today, reread this Parsha. And you're, I think you're going to see it in a new light. You're going to see things a little bit differently. It's not going to be the mean old uh, gray haired bearded God who's standing up at the top and shooting lightning down and killing everybody. <laughs> it's not what's happening here. No, what he's doing is he's saying uh, strategically it's very strategic and it's always the minimal effect. It's like, it's the minimal damage always, always, even with the, you know, like the parting of the red sea and the Reed sea and all of that, that whole thing, it's all, it's minimal damage. It's maximum revelation of who he is. There's a message that he's trying to get across and that's what happened. And I love that he was trying to get this message across to Pharaoh. Um, and I love the fact that there were a lot of Egyptians that did get it and they became the children of Israel because they 
joined their hearts too. They're like, don't you be leaving without me. I'm coming too. <laughs> you can have all these bracelets. You can have all these earrings, but I'm coming too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. It's like he, before this even happened, if you remember from last week, he already made provision for that. He said, yeah, you're going to tell them we're going to deliver. And oh, by the way, don't forget oh, to tell them that they're yeah. going to go get, they're going to go ask their neighbors for some stuff. Yeah. I, I don't even ask my neighbor for a cup of like sugar no. anymore. Like I don't even know my neighbor's <laughs> no. name. Like, and I, well, I travel so much, but I mean, I'm not that extroverted. I don't like, I I'm like, okay, I know one person's name in the place we're staying right now. And I don't really, it's, it's a, it's a job for me to make myself go make friends. Brenda would know everyone's name in this park and their children's names. She would know everybody <laughs> and their dog. She would know all the things. Cause she loves people like that. I'm like, hi. And then I'm going to go work. So, <laughs> but I, I love that we're it takes a village. Are, it takes a village. I love that we're, we all have gifts and I stay in my lane. Uh, to, right. I, so many women are on here saying, I just wish I knew what was holding me back. I wish I knew. Good. Oh, that's a good you, place Aubrey. to start. That's a good. So place let's stop to and say, father, thank you thank that I know you, you're going to reveal this to me. Cause let's, let's, yes. there's a way of us not getting out of that, of a, of a, the vision. And I believe that that's, he's wanting to push us. He wants to change your vision. We're done with the 2020 vision. We're done with 2021. We're going into 2022. We're going Gregorian now, but this is the thing. We're going into this uh, a marked place in our lives that could be considered a good place to get prepared for Yom Kippur. Let's change your vision. If your vision is you're coming from a place of victimhood where you feel like things are always happening to you, how about if you, your vision changes, this is happening for me. Do I need to right. say that again? Say it again. This is not happening to you. Right. Because if it was to you, then you're serving the wrong God because our God is sovereign. If it's happening for you, then yeah. you're serving the God who is sovereign. So father, this is for me. And you've promised me mm -hmm. that you're for me, that you're not against me. You've promised me that no weapon formed against me will prosper. You've promised that this, you're going to work this all out for my good. You are promised me. That's part of my inheritance. Yes. Is that I get to walk in this. Yeah. So thank you, father. I, <clears throat> I'm blind right now, but I'm going to let you either push me from behind because I need to be a sheep right now, but I know you're the God who inhabits. So where do you inhabit the praises of my people? So I guess I got to praise because I don't feel you. I don't know my vision. I don't know what's happening. So I'm going to start praising, but I'm not going to be a victim. This is not happening to me. Right. So, so, so I'm going to encourage, I'm going to push and coach you to all stand and say, I refuse to be a victim anymore. Life isn't happening to me, but for me. And I serve the sovereign God. And I'm no longer going to bow my knee to this God that's making me think things always bad happen to me and that I'm a victim because you are, you are not, he knows your name. Oh yeah. Amen. Yes. May that just settle upon each and every one of us. Amen. Yes. Yes. Linda, Linda says that is Amuna. Yes, it is. Yes, this is, it is. This, I believe, I mean, you just do or you don't, if you don't go do, go, go do something else and do it well, but don't be hot or cold. Do you, I mean, be hot or cold. Don't be lukewarm and be like, well, I really believe all these things, but, but all these things happen. Believe he's sovereign. Thank him for what's happening for you and ask him to show you how you conquer out of this and how do you bless others in the process. Right. And rise up, shake it off and go be strong and make it happen. Huzzah! <laughs> That's really good. I like that. Yeah, I feel like we need a little, we need a little Taylor Swift song. Shake it off. Shake it off. We just need to have a little, we need Everybody to have a little jump up and stand. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just shake it off. <clears throat> That's right. I love it. Mary Catherine, preach those big girl panties onto us. <laughs> <laughs> That's amen. You know what? If we yeah. really see, we really do see ourselves as a discipleship program here. Yeah. Um, we, we have gone from just being a little Friday Bible study to a big Friday study to a discipleship program. Yeah. And, um, we really do see this and that's in a discipleship program. If you're in the same place this year as you were last year, then we have not done our job have not. Um, or, or you haven't done your job. So, right. you know, you either, you, or well, speaking of that, you guys, if you're interested, we do, you know, you do know it doesn't cost anything. You can, if you go into our website, go in and click at the top, it says the portion, click it. And then you sign up for the portion membership. Most of you have it and you don't even know it because you're 
email, whatever email you gave us to sign on here, we gave that to you for free. You can go in there and you can actually watch these videos over, but you can also watch the archive video. So you can watch, you know, Viera from last year and see, mm -hmm. you know, what did we, what was last year's, you know, it might be old manna. I don't know, but you, you might get a different perspective on it. Um, I don't, I think we have two years in there that we've started doing that, but yeah, you go in there and you can also listen to the word, let it just wash over you of someone, one of the ladies here reading the word to you. That's always Which is, nice. It's so good because it really redeems your time. You can listen to it three, four, five, six, seven times in a week. It just, you know, hit the replay pop, 15 minutes. Pop in your ears. It's 15 minutes. It's when you're driving to the grocery store. It's when you're picking up your kids. It's when you're, you can actually get that Vacuuming. word into your exactly. And then you can, because sometimes you don't have time to just sit down and read the word, just quiet and, and steady. That's okay. That's the best part. The spirit of God is speaking and he's alive and living and he wants to speak to you and he wants his word to be within you. He wants it to saturate you and he yeah. will teach you everything that you need to know, <clears throat> you know, so we're, we're going to see this repeated ladies. I mean, this is, we'll close this out. We're going to, we're going to see yeah. this repeated. Yeah. Um, it's not, uh, I, I'll, you know, I think last year we talked about, I really believe this is also a deconstruction of, of creation that the father goes through the deconstruction of creation saying, Agreed. no, no, remember I did this. Yeah. No, no. Remember yeah. I made this. No, no. Remember yeah. I, I did this. I think that's happening here too. There's so many dimensions mm -hmm. and every year, maybe we'll take that on a little deeper. If we have, I need, I need all year just to study for this Parsha. I feel like yeah. <clears throat> for all the deep stuff of it. So mm -hmm. I want to say that, you know, um, your heart is strong in your will. Is it, is it strong in your will? Is it strong in your belief systems? Are you are you, are you stubborn or have you been strengthened? I think those are the, that's the thing that Brenda and I both got that. So I know, I know that's from the throne room today Yes, because we didn't even talk. And we both mm -hmm. had the two words that we were like, out of all of those things we could have talked about in this whole Parsha, we both write down the two Hebrew words, Kasha and Hazak, and that that's what we needed to focus on. And I just want to encourage you, father, it, it, am I, am I really Am I strengthened Hazak in the things of you? Am I encouraged in the things and so that my vision is of the things of you? Or have I become strengthened or have I, am I stubborn in the, my old belief systems? Am I stubborn in maybe some old religiosities that I had that are holding me? Am I stubborn in my uh, mindset about money, about giving? What is it that's holding me? Or if you're having a problem with money, it could be that you're not giving. Oh, what's my mindset? I mean, yeah. where is it, Father? He will tell you. He will tell you what's happening. And he's going to, he wants to tell, he wants, to, please, if your child came to you and you said, Mommy, um, I'm really struggling right now. And, and uh, would you please help me and tell me what's holding me back? You're going to be like, Yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm busy right now. No, I've got dishes to do. Sister, you know, you would <laughs> sit down and you'd help walk them through this. You would help yes. them. And of course, what a much better father do we have? Us. than we even tried yes. to be right. I mean, so much yeah. more. And I just know he wants to change your vision. Yeah. This week, he wants you to change your vision. He doesn't want you looking at the horses and chariots and trusting in, in all the things that you think that you're holding so tight to. Mm -hmm. He wants to say, he wants to change your vision. He wants to pull you into the, yeah. the tree of life. Get out mm -hmm. of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, what you think, you know, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the judging of it all, judging yourself, judging others. It's a waste. It's just a waste. It's a waste of time. It, right? isn't, isn't it funny? We are going to go, we're going to get through this and we'll jet, we'll stop into Leviticus. And the very first thing we go into the very first thing we go into Leviticus is he tells us to submit our will. Exactly. And walks us through submitting our will. That's, right. That's the first thing he does. Oh, you want to know how, here, let me give you the book on how to be a priest, yeah. a kingdom of priests. The first thing I need you yeah. to do is I need you to submit your will. I need you to submit your heart your soul. I need you to submit those things to things that you're being strengthened in and you're stubborn to. I need you to mm -hmm. submit those and let me strengthen you in the things and, and recorrect your vision so that you yeah. can approach me. That's how you yeah. approach a king. It's by you submit your will. Yeah. And this is, this is the week guys, because this week we are being um, challenged to look at what is in, what is our will. And if he's crying out for us to be strengthened, what's being strengthened? He wants us to, to, he wants us to undergo this change where we are submitting our will to him. 
and then we're being strengthened in it, not where we are just being strong and stubborn. And, you know, this is the way it's going to be. And this is, no, he's wanting us to be changed into his image and into his likeness. And in that, and also he will strengthen us, right? So he's going to be strengthening us. Well, it's going to happen one way or the other. What's going to be strengthened, okay? Yeah, you're pruned if you do or you pruned if you don't. So get (laughs) just submit to the pruning. So then there's that. Yeah, then there's that. Wow, Father, thank you. Thank Thank you that you've just poured your life. I know that I know that I know that your word has gone out today. And I know women's lives will be changed, which means generations will be changed and affected because they are submitting their will to you. I know that you are going to reveal to them the things that are causing them to bow their knee to that because they don't they they are not trusting in you father and they're gonna they're, you're gonna show them the little foxes or the big ones you're gonna show it to them and i thank mm-hmm. you for that that you love us so much you won't leave us where we are you won't leave thank us you. in egypt thank you for building this nation thank you for building up the women the discipleship the community i thank yes. you as you birth us this year uh, into this this season father of mm-hmm. growth mm-hmm. in you and your word and that we're strengthened, Hazak, Hazak yes. women, Hazak ladies. Thank yes. you. Be Thank strengthened. You. Hallelujah, ladies. Um, as we um, just we're gonna go on out of here. We've got an after party. So for those of you who don't know, when we're done here, we shut down. But everyone who stays on Zoom, we chat for a while, sometimes a long while. We sit and <laughs> giggle back and forth and talk Get to know so each you're other. You're always welcome to jump over if you're watching now on Facebook Live, or you can feel free to hop over with us right now and just be here for the after party. It is not recorded. So it is just us uh, hanging out. Um, Jump over uh, to our website. You can go to the store. You can see how you can register for the conference. You can do that. And I really want to encourage you to consider hanging out with us. There is a seven day free trial, but even just jumping over and being with us because we want you to grow this year. We're, we're going to hold it's self-paced. We have our, our calls are, you know, we're, no one's pushing you, but we are Mm. holding you accountable. We are wanting to be there for you. And we have all the instructors. If you have women that you look up to, they're probably one of our instructors. They have office hours. You can spend time with them. You could ask them questions. And, um, I just want to encourage you to, to, to come over. I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to sound like a commercial because I just, I know you need to be with us. I know that you need to be, be with us and that's Mm -hmm. it. So be yeah. blessed. Brenda, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thank you. Can't Appreciate wait for another you. year. This is exciting. Oh, I know. So good. So good. So good. Love you, ladies. Love you guys. <laughs>